Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, Joe. Hiya. How are you? Good, 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 good. How is everybody? Doing good, thanks. <clears throat> All right. Good evening, Joe. Good evening. Um, we're Sorry to hear about your loss. Sir. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you all very much for your kind emails, and, and I apologize for the delay. No. Um, we're going to just wait a few minutes more um, to see who joins us, and we will um, we'll get started. <clears throat> so in the back of your manual, there's um, all these practice exams, and also I'll give you um, um, another uh, another place for you guys to take some practice exams and um, so on the back of your manual is all the possible questions that can be on the uh, on a test I would suggest that you um, research the uh, or study the, uh, the handout that I gave at the beginning of the class because those are most likely going to be on the uh, exam Okay, thanks. No problem. All right, so I guess we'll, while we're waiting for the next few minutes, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start. So, uh, Jenna, so what is this guy here? The number two transistor. Yeah. That's it. Gary, what's this guy? That's a resistor. Hey, you guys are the best. Bob, what is this guy? <clears throat> Sorry, I was on mute. It's an LED. Uh, nope. All right, how about a switch? How about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> how about let somebody else guess? A lamp. A lamp. It's a lamp. Well, that's right. an LED. Well, all, right. all right, how about uh, how about this guy, Bob? What is this? It's ground, earth. No. Nope. No. This no. is this is uh, ground to chassis, but this guy here is a. Say battery. That was my next guess. All right, battery. All right, battery. cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Howard, what is this guy? Is that a transformer? A transistor, it, sorry. It's exactly. No, 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 no. You were right the first time. You were right the first time. It's actually a transformer, which is comprised of what two components? It's two of... Two capacitors? Yeah, uh, too close. And so there's capacitors and there's inductors, right? Because uh, inductors store um, electrical energy how? Howard? Uh, magnetically? That's it. Exactly correct. Exactly correct. All right, cool. I got to um, review that. All right. Taylor, what is... Oops. That's cheating. What's this guy? Taylor. Oh, Taylor went away. All right, Jenna, what's this? What's number six? Capacitor. Excellent. Gary, what's this guy? That's an LED. That's right. And we know that because it has these little these little arrows going out. All right, uh, Bob. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this hard. So mm -hmm. this is one we haven't seen. What is number two? Um, that's unfair. What's number three? Thingy. Let's make. What, what's number three? That's a switch. A gate. All right. Cool. Cool. And number two would be a fuse. That's it. It's a fuse. All right. And Howard, this guy here, number nine. 
It's a resistor. Mm -hmm. What kind of a resistor? We're going to say variable. Uh, it's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. All right, cool. So I just wanted to go over um, the components because these are the actual um, block diagrams that they'll give you in the exam, and they'll say identify these things. So you need to know what they are and, and how they work and that kind of stuff. Okay? Hi. All right. Um, let's see. All right, cool. So um, just moving forward, excuse me, just moving forward, um, there's a site called hamstudy.org. Okay? So it's hamstudy.org. And the way it works is you can take uh, all the exams here, okay? So you would click on technician and you can go to study mode, okay? And it'll go through the question pool for you and then rate you as to how you do and what you're doing and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And eventually when it comes up, so it'll give you the questions, okay? If you don't know the answer, you click I don't know and then it highlights the answer. And if you need further explanation, you just go here and it explains why that answer is correct. Cool, thank you. Okay. You know, you're welcome. All right, so hamstudy.org. All, All right. right. Cool. All right, so let's proceed. Any questions? You guys have any problems? Any questions? We're all good so far. All right. All good. All right, cool. All right, so let's go to chapter five. We should be able to go whip through that sucker. <laughs> uh, hold on. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, we considered that um, radio frequencies um, are composed of two parts. And I touched upon this early in the class. So one part is the actual carrier, which sends the signal. Okay. And then we add stuff to it. So we'll add voice or we'll add whatever, and that's called modulation. Okay. So uh, we have a carrier and then we have modulation. All right. And how much space it takes up is called its bandwidth. All right. All right. So for um, modulation to work, uh, you need a modulator, and it's all part of the radio. Okay, um, and then you need a demodulator on the receiving part, on the receiving radio. So you press the button, you talk, your voice is modulated, okay, and then it's sent by the carrier, with the carrier, out into the space, and then it's received, hopefully, by somebody, and then it's demodulated in their radio, and that's how that works. Okay, very simple. All right, um, the easiest, the simplest of all waves um, are continuous waves, CW. And it's also um, the abbreviation for Morse code because the, the unmodulated signal remains constant. So it's a continuous wave. All right, so CW is our shorthand for um, Morse code. Morse code is not required for any license in amateur radio. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss it's, that. Well, hey, um, and you'll see the reason for that mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when, we, when we go into it a little bit further. Um, electronics does it all now. Okay. Oh, so okay. everything's hooked up to your computer, and people have gotten away from. Um, <laughs> From Slaving CW, over the right? keys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, there's a lot of people who still do it. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, let's talk about uh, voice and modulation. So what they found out was that if we have a carrier wave, okay, and we're at 800 kilohertz, all right, well, we can, we can modulate on one side or the other side of that signal, slightly off, okay? And what happens is we need less power to go further, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So this is the whole signal, all right? But what we decided, what we found out was we can use a part of the band. We can use the upper part and send. So this is the carrier here, all right? So the carrier is here, okay? And then we can send the modulation on the up, uh, upper side or the lower side, okay? of the signal, and it'll go further with less power, all right? And that is known as single sideband, all right? Okay, all right, somebody else joined. Um, all right, so, um, so we can do this uh, very, very effectively. And you'll see when we go to, um, to play with our radio in a little bit, you'll see that when we go to a different band, there'll be an upper side band or lower side band. Nobody really uses the entire the entire um, bandwidth. It's too inefficient. Okay, so you'll see that we'll be at a specific um, band and we'll be an upper side band or a lower side band. Okay. So the, the question is, um, what, wh where do I go? Uh, is it upper side band? Let's say I'm on 20 meters. Is it upper side band or lower side band? And then they talk about it here. And they say, below 10 megahertz band, lower side band is used. Above 10 megahertz, upper side band is used, okay? I personally have found that to be not true, but this is what you need to answer for the exam, okay? When you get your radios and you start playing with them, um, you'll see that people are all, all literally all over the place, okay? Mm -hmm. That's been my experience, all right? All right, um, so um, here they talk about typical bandwidth, okay? And um, so you'll see that FM voice uses 10 to 15 kilohertz. That's how much space it takes up. Um, AM voice takes about six kilohertz, all right? Uh, single sideband, notice that single sideband is tiny compared to um, FM voice and AM voice. It's fractionally uh, of what um, these, they're using the full signal is, okay? Digital which is using your computer, and we'll get into that in a little bit, using your computer to talk to other hams on their computer um, uses um, a very, very small amount of signal because it's digital, okay? But the winner of them all, okay, is CW, Morse code, okay? So Morse code uses 150 hertz tiny, 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 okay? And um, that's why it's so popular. Because with a one watt, one watt radio using CW, you can literally talk around the world, okay? Because the bandwidth is tiny and um, it goes like crazy, all right? Any questions? All right, nope. cool, all right. Um, all right, so uh, with, they talk about receivers, okay? The receiver we're using here in this class is this one here. Um, that's one of my radios. Uh, it's the FT991, um, but they all kind of work the same. And they talk about where the band button is and the band button is located there. And this is the clarifier or the RIT, R-I-T, receiver incremental tuning fine tuning, that's what it is, okay, just a fine tuner. All right, cool. And then they talk about, uh, they talk about the bands and where the bands are. And remember that the bands are um, defined as 300 over the frequency in megahertz. Remember we discussed that, right? So if you're at 14 something, 14.000, you're on the 20 meter band. And how did I get that? 
Does any everybody know? Yes, no. Yeah. From the formula. The, uh, <laughs> the formula, yeah. Everybody remember the formula? If you don't, now's a good time to ask. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So we're good. All right. Um, all right, good. So uh, most radios, such as the one above, the FT991, is a multi-mode radio, okay? Which means I can go single sideband, I can go AM, I can go FM, I can go CW, okay? Or I can go data, okay? And the most popular of data is RIDI, all right, TTY, Radio Telegraph, um, and um, it's one of the one of the modes that we can use in a digital format. All right, PTT. Everybody know what PTT is? Push to talk. Okay. All radios have a push to talk function. It's on the side of the radio or the on the keys or whatever. You press it. You talk. You let go. You listen. Okay. All right, cool. And then they talk about different components. These are not on the exam, but just things you need to know, uh, gain and, you know, that kind of stuff. All right. And then they talk about um, electronic keyers. That took the place of manual Morse code. Okay. And you'll see, we'll see in a little bit how that works. Okay. And you just type on your computer, it turns it into Morse code. Receiving is automatic. You'll receive it. Um, you'll see it on the screen. Um, it automatically decodes more. Excuse me, Morse code. Okay. Mm, okay. All right. Cool. A receiver incremental tuner. It's a fine tuning. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, it's like variable frequency oscillator. Okay. It's uh, just means. Okay. All right. Cool. So basically that's it, okay? Um, here they talk about some other components. They talk about squelch, and squelch is, let's tell you what squelch is. Okay, so that's background noise. Um, all right, and I can turn the squelch on or off, and as I turn the squelch on, um, so it gets rid of the noise. It's a noise threshold filter. Okay. Okay. Um, notch filters. There's filters for everything. Okay. There's ele there are electronic um, circuits, and um, so if you get uh, noise, um, you'll use a notch filter. Okay. Then they have noise reduction functions, very similar to the old-fashioned Dolby on tape, on cassette tape, okay? So um, it removes audio noise. Uh, and the whole idea is you'll see when you get into it that um, when you get up to the, you know, 20 meters, 40 meters, 60 meters, um, 80 meters, 160 meters, you'll get a lot of noise and you want to minimize the amount of noise that you um, hear in your radio. Okay, that's why this filters for just about everything. Okay, all right, cool. Digital communications, okay. So digital modes, um, so the way digital modes work is they work through your computer. So your, your radio is hooked up to your computer and using a piece of software, um, I like to use Ham Radio Deluxe. Let's see if I can activate that guy. Um, here we go, Ham Radio Deluxe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and this is free software, okay? Um, and this is now controlling my radio, okay? So right now we're on the 20 meter band and I can see that here, okay? I'm on the 20 meter band. And we can tune in. Oh, let's see. All right. Um, let's go lower side band and see what's on there. So this takes a little patience here.
So this is what you're hearing is a is a part of digital mode, okay? And um, they have this this is all integrated. This software is free, by the way. <clears throat> okay, we'll let this load. Make your sound car sink. <laughs> all right, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so here is. Um, digital mode this is called a waterfall and normally when you see a line like this you'll click on it and if, if it is a, a digital mode it'll start interpreting it for you automatically so let's just try see if I can get a uh, let's go um, let's go CW This may this band may not be open. Oh well. Okay. Well, uh, we'll we'll wait. We'll see what happens. Um. All right. So, um, on the digital modes, there is uh, radio teletype. Ready, okay. And ready now. This may be a question on your exam, okay. Uh, ready uses the five-bit Bordeaux code. So the question will be, um, what digital mode uses the five-bit Bordeaux code? And I'll give you Pactor, Winmore, JT65, and Ready will be the possible answers. It's always Ready, okay. Ready is um, the most popular um, type of communication, um, and um, it's the one of the oldest. Okay, so the, it uses five bits for the alphabet. Okay, um, and um, pretty effective. All right, cool. Um, all right, so uh, messages. So messages always have two parts. Messages in digital modes are sent out as packets, okay? Um, just like a computer network. And uh, it consists of a header and data, okay? And a header is the uh, information about the packet, the call sign of the destination, and blah, 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 and all that stuff, okay? And the data is the actual data. And if you're following with me in, in your manual, this is what it looks like, okay? All right, and um, the most popular um, type is PSK31. PSK stands for phase shifting keying, okay? Phase shift keying, um, and that, that's about it. All right, and then um, they wanted you to see APRS, and I wanted to demonstrate that. So hold on, and I will demonstrate that. So if you go to APRS.FI, okay, this is it. And as I explained to you, um, APRS early on is a way to track um, okay. amps. Yeah, yeah. So every station on the planet Earth, okay, if it's enabled with APRS, is listed here, okay? So this is where I live, okay? But you can you can zoom out, okay, um, and see the see the world. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. All right. So you can let's say go here to Oregon and see who's on and where they are and that kind of stuff. And it takes a minute for it to refresh, but um, it will come up. Anyway, so that's APRS. Um, as you can see, there's a gazillion stations out <laughs> there. Okay, and it'll take a second to refresh. Um, but anyway, there's a gazillion stations out there. And if you want to see one of them and see where they are, like for example, this guy here is mobile. Okay, 
Um, and let's see. And you have know, the weather stations. Anything having to do with radio is here on APRS. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, all right. So this is another automatic packet uh, reporting system, and that kind of stuff. All right. Cool. So how does it all work? So it takes your computer, okay, and it's hooked up. Um, your your radio's hooked up to your computer, okay. This is kind of an old-fashioned one, um, and they have this TSB, um, TNC, or uh, MPC unit, and that goes back into the radio. Most modern radios did away with these two components, and they have this built in to the radio themselves, okay? Um, so these are multi-protocol converters, um, and they allow you to send information by um, ready or uh, PSK31 or whatever, okay? <laughs> this is a more modern view, okay? Um, and again, they don't use this kind of stuff anymore. Well, they don't use dial-up. That's the old-fashioned modems on computers. Now everything is broadband. It goes out to the internet, okay? And it uses a, a COM port on the back of your uh, receiver on your radio. So this, this stuff is now integrated into one. The data interface on a lot of radios is integrated into one, all right? And the hottest thing now is um, going to the internet, okay? Another form of digital, and let's see if I can pull this out. Oh, well, a second, <laughs> it's called DMR radio. DMR stands for digital mobile radio, and it was invented by Motorola. And let's see if I can. Okay, so, I, it's, so it's a little walkie-talkie, and let's see if I can pick somebody up. And what happens is the walkie-talkie um, goes to a repeater, and that repeater is hooked up to the internet. The advantage of that is that you can um, contact the entire world, okay, with a handheld. This is like a little walkie-talkie, all right? So let's see if I can bring somebody up. Uh, maybe not. CQ, 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 whiskey two, bravo, my papa. No, maybe not. So again, it's a little walkie-talkie sized. I didn't, I don't have my camera hooked up, but I'll have it hooked up for you on Thursday. And little tiny antenna, and I can talk to, um, talk to the world. Um, I've talked, I've spoken to people in China and Europe, um, Asia, literally all over the place. Wow. Uh, yeah. But again, so the way that works is it works like this. Um, so it works like this. So uh, it's actually a little computer, okay, inside that radio. And that gets hooked up to a, um, uh, to a repeater. That repeater goes out to the internet and it travels wherever it's going to and then it gets demodulated wherever China or whatever um, but it's pretty cool it's pretty cool awesome I'll need more information is, on it <laughs> excuse me I said awesome I'm gonna need a lot of information about okay, it <laughs> okay yeah 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 the problem with it is um, the the thing I value about amateur radio is it's always available. It's always on. It's always there. With DMR um, in all digital modes, is if you lose conductivity to the internet, you're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the only problem with it. So, but other than that, you know, so in case of a hurricane or whatever, you know, it might be a problem. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's very, very cool. Okay. Awesome. Power supplies. And one of the questions um, 
<clears throat> and that you're going to be asking and you'll be asked is why do you need a separate power supply and the answer is because power companies throughout the United States of America suck <laughs> <That's the answer. laughs> okay so the, the reason is that the power we get is not regulated um, it goes up, it goes down, it's 107 volts, it's 112 mm -hmm. volts, it's 105 volts, it's, it's a mess, okay? So in order to stabilize the power, because we're transmitting, okay, um, most manufacturers of radios require an external power supply, okay? And this is what it looks like, okay? We need one of these, all right? Um, and the reason is um, the power is cleaner, it's better, it's more consistent, okay? Um, and you can regulate, you'll see um, on Thursday, I'll show you mine, uh, you can actually regulate how much power you put in or take out and that kind of stuff, mm. okay? So uh, the answer is to the question, how can you use separate power supplies is, is because power. power companies suck. That's, <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Okay, batteries. Uh, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on this. Um, batteries, we all know, double A's, triple A's, C's, D's, nine volts. Um, you know, they are what they are. Okay. Uh, most uh, amateur radio um, uh, uses. Um, lithium ion okay that's the big thing uh, and lithium ion oops, sorry about that lithium ion uh, you'll have to be careful with them they have to be charged with lithium ion rechargers okay and this is what the batteries look like I'm sure we all know what they look like okay <laughs> all right cool um, all right one of the questions I see the question a lot in the general exam um, is um, on 12 volt batteries, lead acid batteries. Uh, I saw it once on a technician exam, okay? And, and the question was, what do you have to be careful with when you rapidly charge or discharge a lead acid battery? And um, that's the last one on the list here. Um, yep, let's see. Mm -hmm. This one here. So you have to be careful because when you charge or discharge a lead acid battery, it emits hydrogen gas. And you have to be careful that you don't blow yourself up. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So car batteries, the old-fashioned car batteries where you had to put water in them and all that stuff, um, they are lead acid batteries. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Any questions? Pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, cool. So um, let's talk about talking to people, all right? Mm -hmm. And talking to people, uh, I explained to you that it's very, very important that you don't leave your, um, your privileged bands, okay? So if you see the study sheet that I sent you, and if you look at the ham, um, plan, the band plan, you'll see where you can and can't go, okay? And there's a reason for that. Um, and the reason for that is um, we have so many frequencies to choose from as amateur radio operators. Um, we want to make sure we're not bumping into each other. And they want you to have a little bit more experience before you go into the um, upper bands on the um, you know, 20 meters, you have some privileges on 20, you have some privileges on 40, but not a lot. So we don't want you colliding with very, very experienced ham operators, okay? And then again, they can't record your call um, because if you don't belong in that, in that segment and you're there, so if I'm talking to you in an amateur band segment, and I find out that you're a technician, I can't record the call, mm. okay? I can't um, document the call, all right? All right, cool. So, 
Um, all right. So there's different types of, of, of frequencies. We talked about two meters, 70 centimeters, and we talked about repeaters. Okay. And you remember that repeaters um, are a way for us to extend our line of sight. Okay. So uh, if I'm going to transmit line of sight from, let's say, Hicksville to a town three or four towns over, that's about my, my limit on simplex, which is direct radio to radio. Okay. Um, so what they came up with, they came up with a repeater. And a repeater is nothing more than a radio. It's automated. Okay. It's usually high up someplace, or at least the antenna is pretty high up. And it takes your signal and retransmits it out to give you more range, okay? How do you find out about repeaters? Okay, so repeaters, um, here we go. So just Google repeater book, okay? And here you have repeater, this is the repeater book, okay? And you pick the state that you're in, okay? So I'm in New York, for example. So I'll click New York and wait for that to come up. Okay, cool. And then they have all the towns in New York, okay? So if I wanted to see my my repeater, all right, I know my repeater or the town that my repeater is in is called Glen Oaks. So I'll click Glen Oaks, okay? And here's my repeater here, okay? <clears throat> and a repeater works this way. On two meters, okay, it has a shift. So you transmit on one frequency, you receive on the other, okay? So these are the receive frequencies. So this happens to be 146.850. When I press transmit, it goes down six megahertz, okay? That's its companion frequency, all right? And I think I can show that to you. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So that's that's our. Here's our um, our radio. All right. Hold on. All right. Now, watch this top part here. Okay. This is the frequency I'm on. All right. Um, and I'm going to hit it. You notice what happened? So this part, this mm -hmm. part here dropped 600 megahertz. Watch again. Mm. Sure did. Yep. Okay. And that beep you hear at the end, that indicates that the machine received your signal. Okay and uh, it's processing it, and you let go of it, you get the little beeper tone, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the way that works. When you're on a repeater, okay, the proper procedure is to just say your call. So you say, uh, whiskey to bravo my papa, okay? That's my call, and you can tell them, you, some people say whiskey to bravo my papa listening, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so let's try that. Let's see what happens. We'll see if anybody's listening. Whiskey two, Bravo, Mike, Papa, listening. And we'll give it a second. We'll see if anybody's out there. And we'll try again. Whiskey two, Bravo, Mike, Papa, listening. Nope, guess not. Anyway, um, so that's the way that works, okay? On, um, uh, on, uh, didn't want to do that. Oh, uh. All right, so on here, okay, when I press this on 70 centimeters, watch the 443. Watch what happens. Ready? Okay. That went up. Okay. Six 
megahertz, okay? Because that's the separation um, for 70 centimeters, all right? Again, I would take and I would just say, my call sign, Whiskey 2 Bravo, my papa listening, or if people are talking, I would wait until there's a pause, and I would then, in the middle of it, say, Whiskey 2 Bravo, my papa, and wait for it to be acknowledged. Okay, that's the proper protocol for a repeater function. Okay? Okay. Now, the other type is if we go to, let's say, 40 meters, <clears throat> okay, and I want to talk to somebody on 40 meters, let's see here, and I want to talk to somebody, all right, hold on. Let's see if I can find somebody. Maybe not. Anyway, um, if I want to, let's see. if I'm just calling anybody and I want to speak to just about anybody, I would say CQ, CQ, CQ. So the letter C and Q means any station. It means I want to talk to anybody who will hear me. Okay? So here, because I'm not using a repeater here. Okay? This is straight out, and it's not line of sight. I'm using some other method. It's still a little early. All right. So anyway, the point is that when I'm on a repeater, I do not use CQ, okay? I just state my call and wait for an answer. If I'm on one of the other bands, okay, where I'm not using a repeater, okay, actually you can do the same thing on 20 meter simplex or you can use the same thing on 70 centimeter simplex. Um, you can use CQ, any station, okay? That's what that means. Is that clear to everybody? Everybody yes. got that? All right, cool. All right, cool. Um, and you'll see things like beacons, okay, on there. And beacons just let you know where you are. And they're registered. And there's a beacon website. You can Google ham radio beacons, and they'll tell you where they are, okay? And um, you can use satellite uplinks or downlinks. You can talk to the satellites. You can bounce off the satellites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right, cool. And here they have um, the most common uh, bands, um, plans um, that are used, kind of, I guess. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know that anybody really uses these, but okay. You know, they want you to know this, so I guess so. You don't need to have these memorized, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, so we want you to stay within your assigned band and that the blah, 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 blah. And here's what we discussed, okay? So this is how you would do it. This is how you would do it on a, a simplex. So it's radio to radio, no repeater, okay? Um, and the only thing you need to worry about is on a repeater, okay? Okay. So you would say if you're doing a simplex, you would do CQ, CQ, CQ. This is your call sign, um, that kind of stuff, okay? And in digital modes, um, hopefully we'll get to play with this tonight. You'll see CQ, 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 DE. DE means from, okay? So CQ, 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 DE, your call sign, blah, 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 please respond, okay? So DE means from, okay? and K means that your transmission is finished. All right? Okay. All right, cool. All right, Q uh, signals. I think that's where they're going with this. All right, so Q signals. The ones you need to know, okay, is uh, QRM. That's interference, man-made interference, okay? Mm -hmm. So if somebody has their key stuck in the down position or, you know, they're intentionally trying to interfere with your transmission. That's QRM. QRN is natural. So if there's a lot of static um, or whatever, 
um, you would say you have QRN, all right, and um, QTH is your home, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and and then the one that I, it's not on the test, but just so you know, um, QRP, okay, it really means low power, okay, which I happen to be a QRP -er, so I believe in low power, so. Um, that's what that means. All right, cool. And then they have a grid uh, system. So everybody lives within a grid, all right? And you can find out your grid by going to, um, to one of the grid locators uh, on, the, on the web. And you put in your zip, and it tells you the grid that you're in. Usually it's two letters and two numbers, OK? So Newton, Connecticut. Uh, is FN31. All right, and you can use that, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. All right, cool. So you can do other things um, as a uh, uh, technician, uh, amateur radio, you can do video. Um, it's a little slow, uh, not, the, not the fastest thing in the world, but it's a little slow, but it does work, and you can transmit video and all sorts of stuff. All right, cool. So slow scan, okay. Uh, repeaters we talked about. And um, you can look up the repeater. And again, it'll, this is the information it'll give you. It'll give you the mode that it's using, okay. Um, it'll give you uh, the call sign of the repeater, wherever it is. Repeaters must identify every 10 minutes, as must you, okay. So every 10 minutes, you must state your call sign, okay? Um, and then you can, it'll tell you the listening frequency, okay? And then either have a plus or a minus. Remember on two meter, it's 600, and on um, 70 centimeter, it's um, 6,000, okay? So um, keep that in mind, all right? And then they have these access tones. Okay, and these access tones are tones that you put in. There are 26 of them, 26 different types of access tones. You'll put that into your radio to access the repeater. They act as a key, okay? So that um, if you accidentally put in a repeater frequency uh, and you pressed the key, you would not activate, you would not key up the repeater, okay? because you must have this access key. Also, as part of the uh, parameters um, for your radio. So when you get your radio and you start looking up repeaters, there'll be a place for the, uh, for the receive frequency, for the transmit frequency, which is the offset, okay? And then they'll also ask you if you need to have an access tone. This tone is not audible, okay? So you, don't, you won't hear it but it activates the radio, and the uh, repeater, I'm sorry. Okay, is that, everybody got that? I'm, I know I'm going kind of fast, so I don't want to lose anybody. Everybody comfortable with all of that? Um, Joe, would you mind clarifying yeah. again about uh, what we were just talking about, the listing of repeaters? When you said on sure. two meters is 600, and on 70 uh, centimeters is 6,000. Right. 6,000 what? Um, here we Let's see if I can do this. Okay. All right, cool. So um, I think they identify it here. Hold on. Okay. It's megahertz. So oh, here. Okay. Um, so on uh, two meters, it's plus or minus 600 kilohertz. Okay. Okay. On 70 centimeters is plus or minus five megahertz. I'm sorry, five megahertz uh, um, of change, not six. Change. Five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. I get it. Okay, so, so you receive and transmit at, um, at different frequencies. Okay. All right. Thank and you. And that's known as the repeater shift or auto repeater um, offset mm -hmm. down here. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Um, let's see here. Access tones. So the access tones are the tones that you need. Um, they're called CTCSS, Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System, 
which act as the key to activate the um, the repeater. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, cool. And you can read a little bit more about it here. Um, all right. And then they have um, uh, tones where they you would use this system. Okay. So. Uh, it uses VoIP, vo- voice over IP. So you have your radio. Okay, this is, looks like it's a DMR. It gets connected to a local repeater. The repeater sends it to a computer. The computer goes out using VoIP to, through the internet to someplace else far, far away, you know, England, <laughs> France, wherever, Russia, Japan. And then it sends it to the local repeater and another DMR station picks it up, okay? That's the way it works. The problem with this is if this is out and this component is out because of a storm or something, you're not talking very far, okay? Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's, it's a good system. All right, so all of, these, all of these work exactly this way, okay? So they all use the internet. So you have IRLP, you have Echolink, okay? You have wires too, you have D-Star, and you have DMR, okay? Mm-hmm. The most popular is Echolink, and on your smartphone, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the, um, the App Store and type in Echolink, and if you have an Android-type phone, you can go to the store and type in Echolink, and Echolink is free. Once you get your license, um, it, cause it asks you for your, your code, your uh, call sign. Um, you can contact any repeater that has Echolink or IRLP. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it uses a protocol and this is a question on the test and uses a protocol called DTMF. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so that's it. Um, all right, cool. And again, these are other um, other d- uh, digital voice modes like D-Star, um, and this is by Yesu. Um, it happens to be the manufacturer of the radio, and it works okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right, DMR is uh, vendor independent. So although it was developed by Motorola, um, there are a million DMR radios, okay, out there that you can play with and they're pretty inexpensive. All right, cool. Any questions? Are we good? We're good. All right. All right, cool. Um, All right, so let's talk about exchanging messages. So the, I think, in my opinion, one of the single most important things of amateur radio is that you can send messages around the world, okay? Mm-hmm. And in order to standardize it, they use this form that you see before you, the radiogram, okay? And they have things called traffic nets. And um, my wife is very big into it, into traffic net. Uh, she's on at 7.30 every night, um, and she participates in the traffic net. And this is traffic that is sent from a sender, okay, uh, from another to a ham radio operator. That ham radio operator relays it to the next ham radio operator who relays it to the next ham radio operator. And then finally it gets to the place, to a ham radio operator close to the person it's going to, and then that last ham radio operator picks up the phone or whatever and relays the message, okay? So this is very, very important in, in terms of um, tornadoes or hurricanes or any kind of natural disaster, um, very, very important. We had um, Superstorm Sandy here years ago and um, power was out and cell phones were out, regular phones were out, and um, we got messages to uh, people's family 
that they were okay, they were just without power. So it's very, very helpful, okay? And um, very, very important. So I suggest that you at least look at um, joining the traffic net uh, in your area and at least understand how it works. So heaven forbid you get stuck in a natural disaster, you know how to send uh, a radiogram or receive a radiogram for somebody else, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and here they go into the component parts of the radiogram and how it works and that kind of stuff, not on the exam, okay? okay. All right, cool. Uh, it, the important thing to know about a radiogram is that the it's got maximum of 25 words total. Not on the exam, just thought you might want to know that, okay? All right, cool. And then they have uh, amateur radio services, such as ARIES, Amateur Radio Emergency Services, and then RACES, Radio Amateur um, Civil Emergency Service. Um, both uh, provide services to um, local government, um, civil defense, that kind of stuff. So we decided at this point, my wife and I, to join ARIES. We've been members for a while, um, and we provide um, radio um, coverage for marathons and walks and the cancer walk and all sorts of stuff, okay? And also we're activated in case of a disaster, mm -hmm. all right? Very important, and I, and I ask you to at least consider uh, looking up Aries uh, and Races and see if it's something that interests you. Okay, it's kind of kind of cool. All right, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Um, tactical communications. Um, when you're on an assignment someplace, such as a marathon, they'll give you a tactical call, and they'll say. Um, command post three or whatever um, instead of your regular call sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, the stress calls, okay. So the stress calls, so I'm an old timer um, and it used to be break was the emergency. Um, so if I got onto a repeater and I said break, uh, everything in the entire world stopped, okay until I went first and I, and I stated my message, but that has since gone away. Oh. Uh, now, yeah, so break isn't really used that much anymore. Mm -hmm. So now it's Mayday, <laughs> no. okay, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Um, but funny enough, normally when you get on a repeater, they'll say, and you're listening to the repeater, they'll say, if somebody needs to break, <laughs> let us know. Um, even though that the term break isn't used anymore. Anyway, mayday is used. <laughs> anyway, um, so the stress call, mayday, mayday, mayday. Um, if you do say mayday, the world will stop, uh, no question. Uh, and you'll have people out the wazoo listening to your, um, to whatever you have to say. All right. All right, cool. Uh, so that, that, uh, yeah. Do they still use break in regular uh, QSO? No, it, that's a great question. Depends who you're talking to. Yeah. <laughs> Depends who you're talking to. So, yeah, so um, I, I still, just instinctually, I'll just stop when I hear break, but, um, you know, and, and just listen intently. But, uh, you know, modern hams, it, it's not just not used anymore. Okay. It's just It's just not. It doesn't have the, the, the chutzpah that it had one time. All right, anyway. Um, good question, though. Uh, anyway, so um, anyway, so you know about, um, about the emergency services and that kind of stuff, all right. So um, satellite operations. So you can connect to the satellites, um, absolutely, as a technician, no problem. And um, it's, these are the frequencies most commonly used, okay, for satellite services. Um, and my ham radio deluxe does have a 
satellite um, component here on top here, but it doesn't work. I, I haven't figured out why. So, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, and you can talk. There's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of satellite different satellites, and you can most of them are weather or you know whatever, but you can um, you can uh, use them no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about um, low Earth or, or orbit, um, perigee, okay, um, and that kind of stuff. You can also talk to a space station, which, excuse me, which is really cool. Normally, every astronaut who's on the space station is also a ham radio operator, <laughs> and they love talking to people um, ham radio. No problem. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. We'll give them a call. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's very cool. It's very cool. All right, cool. So that's about it. So how are we doing? Everybody okay? Yep. All right. Um, Ismail, you okay? Bob, Howard, we okay? I'm good. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm good. Thank uh, you. All right, cool. I'm here. All I'm right. present. No problem. All right. Uh, let's talk about your license. Um, so your license is good for 10 years, okay? Um, after that, you're given um, um, a notice, uh, normally email or sometimes letter saying your license is coming up for renewal. Um, you have um, a, a, a courtesy window, um, which allows you to uh, renew and um, <laughs> It's within two years of your license expiring. You get your license back with no problem. After that, you have to take the exams again. Pain the butt. But anyway, um, that's just the way it is. All right. All right. So there's two that your license consists of two parts. So there's an operator license and a station license. Okay. Um, so the, the station license is the license for the radio, okay? Mm -hmm. For example, like a repeater has a separate license, okay? Um, and then you are licensed as the operator, all right? So they combine them together. License is an amateur operator primary station license. So they license your radio, which is the thing that's actually transmitting, and they license you, all right? There's three classes, a radio license, there's technician, general, and amateur extra, okay? So each carries a set of, of uh, frequencies and operating privileges, um, which are different, okay? Um, I don't know if the tests are any harder. It's a little bit more math in them, but not, not really terribly bad. Um, so you get more privileges as the tests um, increase in, in, um, in difficulty. Again, not super hard, but it's, it's just the way it is. All right. Anyway. Um, all right. Uh, that's it. So this is what your license will look like. Your license is no longer mailed to you. All right. You will go to the FCC website. Okay. Where you picked up your FRN number. I hope everybody did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you will check about three to five days after your exam, after you've passed your exam, and it will tell you that you've passed your exam, and there'll be a link, and you'll click on it, and you can print out your license, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what your license will look like. Blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. And your exam <laughs> is um, element number two, okay? And it's 35 questions. Passing is 26 is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing for general. Uh, extra is 50. 37 is correct. All right. All right. So what happens is a bunch of people get together. They come up with these exam questions. They throw them in a pool. And that's it. And that's what the exam pool is. So the questions have only changed very slightly in the last 10 years, okay? Mm -hmm. Now with the advent of, um, of DMR, they have 
more digital modes, so there is maybe a question on DMR, okay? Not really, you know, I, I haven't seen any DMR questions, but it's possible, all right? Mm -hmm. But um, it is what it is. All right, so you'll walk in, there's three guys, okay? Um, and at least three guys that are amateur extras, and they grade your exam, it's multiple choice, and that's it, okay. And um, you have a 10-year term, that is a question on the test, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what these things mean, okay? So these things mean that there's a question related to what you just learned, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's 90 days before your license expire, uh, they'll notify you, okay? Um, and then there's a two-year um, grace period, okay, for a new license without taking the exam again. All right, and that one is a question on the exam, right? And then if you want to become a volunteer examiner, you can. Uh, you have to be at least a general, <laughs> and uh, generals can grade uh, technician level exams. That's it. Okay, they cannot grade general uh, exams. They can only grade technician exams. And then if you go become an extra, you can grade all of the exams. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It costs fifteen dollars, um, and you'll need one photo ID, your FRN. Okay. And um, cell phones are not acceptable for uh, calculators. Okay. You have to go to the dollar store and buy a calculator. Um, and if you take uh, the general and the extra class here, we will recommend a specific calculator for you that we know upside down and backwards. And it's like eight bucks or something at Staples. And um, it'll serve you for both of those exams, okay? Anyway, but for technician, um, you, any calculator will do, okay? All right, cool. Um, you then fill out this form, okay, um, and um, you will answer here, you'll check this box here, it says technician element two, all right, and then um, the people who grade your exam will sign this, and you'll be good to go, all right. All right, this is the ham plan. No, ham plan. This is the pants plan. <laughs> plan. <laughs> anyway, um, and you can read that at your leisure. Okay. okay. All right, cool. So these are your privileges. Okay. So um, PEP means peak envelope power. All right, so you're allowed 200 watts peak envelope power. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Most radios come standard with 100, all right, which is plenty fine for right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to play um, on these um, frequencies, okay? Now, these are the same frequencies that we, so extras use and generals. The problem is your range where you're allowed to be is is much smaller, okay? So if we go back here and we go to 40 meters, okay, down at 40 meters, you're only a lot of little space here as opposed to, so at 40 meters, you can go from 70, uh, 7.025 to 7.125, which is kind of hmm. uh, right here. So you're allowed this right where the, my line is, so from the beginning, so 0.25, here to here, that's it, okay? Um, let's talk about these bands. There's one band that you cannot use voice. Does everybody remember what that is? Which band that is? Jenna, say 30 meters. <laughs> well, that's easy, 30 meters. <laughs> 30 meters. <laughs> All right. So 30 meters is digital only, okay? No, 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 no voice. We don't want to hear voice. We don't want to know from voice. This is digital information only. That's it. No more. 
Okay. Oh. And then for, for some reason, the fact that it's digital only has turned off a lot of amateur radio people and it's not used very, very much. Okay. And I even know some hams who say you shouldn't even be on there. Well, you can be on there, just no voice. Okay. So voice is a no, no on 30 meters. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so mission type. Okay. CW, um, Morse code, da, 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 you know, <laughs> um, data, um, it's just computer to computer image, anything having to do with image, um, television. So if you hear the term image, it means television, um, MCW, um, not used as much as straight CW, but okay. So this is using a, an audio tone. Uh, phone is voice, okay, um, and so forth and so on. All right. So um, just some of the some of the emission types that there are. All right. And um, all right. So we share um, we share some bands. OK, um, so when we have um, the authority to be there primarily, it's called the primary allocation. Um, when we uh, live with a neighbor, like for say the forest service, OK, um, we have secondary privileges. Mm -hmm. So um, we have on some bands, we have um, secondary privileges. All right, 70 centimeters being one of them, six meters being another. Uh, not really too much for us. Nobody here lives in Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin um, and that kind of place. Up by, the, um, by Yellowstone National Park, um, unless you live there, uh, it's not something that we really worry about too much. All right. Okay. Um, international rules. Okay. So the in international rules, there's a, um, a group of people called the International Telecommunications Union or the ITU. They make up the rules for, um, for communicating to other countries. All right. And I think the only country currently on the list that you cannot talk to is North Korea. Okay. I could be wrong, but I believe it's just North Korea. All right. So um, the ITU is a part of the United Nations and it allows for free exchange. You can talk to Russia all you want. You can talk to Cuba all you want. You can talk to, so I think it's just North Korea where we're not allowed, I believe. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, and that's it on that. All right. All right. Um, so let's stop here for tonight. All right. And then we'll finish up chapters eight and nine on Thursday. And then we'll start taking some practice exams. And we'll just make sure that everybody understands everything. And we'll be good to go. So, awesome. all right. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Joe. All right. Thank you. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.